Hi guys, design time again, but okay, it's a light design. This time I want to show you a small circuit I made, small design I made for measuring varicaps, varactors. Yeah, what is that? Perhaps many of you didn't heard even about such a device. What is a varactor? I wrote it down and I will let you read it. So, a varicap diode, or varactor, is a semiconductor diode whose internal capacitance changes with respect of the applied reverse voltage. Thus, it acts as a variable semiconductor capacitor. Varicaps are operated in a reverse biased state, so no DC current throws to the, flows to the device. In a nutshell, that means that a varicap is nothing else than it is a selected diode, that gives you a specific capacitance when a specific voltage is applied from two. And this is something that is repeatable every time. Because this phenomenon of the changing capacity between anode and cathode is almost on, is, is known on almost all semiconductor devices. But you put an uh, you put an uh, uh, voltage reverse bias it you will get some capacity but you don't know what from the beginning and even if you know it then for for example 1n 4148 the next one the next diode doesn't mean that has the same capacity with the same uh, values you used this is why these devices were invented to give, to give you repeatable results. These are used for tuning, RF tuning, uh, for voltage control oscillators, was used widely in FM and AM radios of the analog era. This thing got quite obsolete since SDR, soft defined radio, is used a couple of years now but not everywhere, and I will show you why. Uh, from what I read, the uh, varicap or varactor was invented from Pacific Semiconductors Incorporated and was patented in 1961 as a voltage-sensitive semiconductor capacitor. Pacific Semiconductors was the predecessor of the, late, the later named TRW. For me, TRW is venerable because I, when I was in Greece and building uh, pirate transmitters, FM transmitters, I had only tubes to do that. And I was always lurking on DRW and Motorola uh, data sheets for devices that I would like to use, but I could never achieve because they are too expensive. So that's a little bit history. Uh, as I said, the video today has to do with uh, um, an appliance, a circuit that lets you that uh, that make uh, that lets you measure the capacity of a varicap and to characterize it. So, for example, here we have a data sheet of one of those varicaps, old ones. This one is called BB112. As I said, it's an old one. It was used for tuning in IAM and amplitude modulation AM receivers. And it has a quite big capacitor range. Applying 1 to 8 volts, 1 volt will correspond maximum to 520 picofarads, and 8 volt would uh, be down to 17.5 minimum. So you see it's a big range, capacity range. This is why it's used in, uh, in uh, AM, AM receivers. The uh, symbol of the varicap is this one that I draw here. This is the one that I learned in the 70s. And this is the one that I is for me a varicap. 
there are newer symbols that are just uh, a diode and above the diode symbol is a capacitor. Honestly, I don't like it and I don't, I'm not accepting it. This is the symbol I know and this is for me the correct symbol. But the thing is, how do you test such a thing, such a, such a device? We said that to change the capacity, you have to, to reverse bias it with uh, some kind of some some voltage. Here, for example, one to eight volt. Um, using an LCR meter like that will not do the job because. It will not. This this LCR meter will not uh, produce any vo any voltage, yeah? or at least not the voltage you need. So we have here the necessity of some kind of mini design, and ta da! This is what I came up with. And the left side. You have the supply. You can supply this mini circuit either with a USB 5 volt or with a barrel connector between 5 and 12 volt. Behind of that, you have a boost converter that boosts up up to 30 volts or more. A simple potentiometer, quite high value, because everything here is high impedance, because the varicap itself is draws only microamps. Yeah? This pot is the one that sets the reverse voltage on the cathode, the reverse bias voltage on the cathode of the varicap. There is a quite a large resistor, one mega ohm. Again, we do not need any current here. And secondly, if we unintentionally polarize the varicap wrong, nothing will happen at, at, at all. Okay, now we have the reverse polarity. We have a high impedance meter that shows me the voltage that is applied at that time at the varicap. And then I can check what voltage corresponds to what capacitance on the LCR meter. But we still have, <laughs> we still cannot connect a cap and, and we, can, we still cannot connect an LCR meter here between these two these two points because we have a voltage here applied so the whole idea is of the circuit is what i wrote here the key is the isola isolation of the cathode with a large capacitor that means by using a much larger capacitor than the varicap will ever achieve a varicap is up to 500, 600 picofarads. In series with a 100 nano or 100 microfarad capacitor, the capacitive error change that you have in series will be small enough so that you at least can use the circuit to see if you are in the correct ballpark. If you are inside the specifications or completely outside, this is not a precise instrument or circuit. This is just to show you the varicap you under test is complying with the specifications of the manufacturer, or it is outside, or it's completely grab. This is what it does, nothing else. So this is this is what I came up with. Very easy construction on a breadboard. Such an easy circuit. I used only ready-made modules from eBay AliExpress. The barrel connector, if used. The USB connector, but mostly I'm using with five volts. A DC-DC boost converter that can boost at five or 12 volts up to 35, 40 volts depending, this you can set test with uh, this potentiometer of the boost converter and cheap 
three digit LED meter that measures the applied reverse biasing voltage of the varactor or varicap. This potentiometer changes the voltage, the output voltage of the uh, of the DC DC converter and it looks like that. 8 volt at the moment set for the uh, for this BB112 goes down to 0 volt. Okay, I connected the probes, the LCR probes on the on the test circuit and I inserted the BB112 the varicap I'm at 0 volts the problem is it shows almost 700 picofarads and why? easy because we are at 0 volts and the specs starts with 1 volt Okay, let's put it to 1 volt, more or less, and we have 519 picofarads, so we are well in the ballpark of 520 picofarads maximum. If we go back or raise up to 8 volts, the full the highest voltage that is usable, we see 29.13 picofarads. This again is well in the ballpark between 7.5 and 34. So this is the operation of this whole thing. Uh, important is to put the LCR meter and the highest frequency test frequency you have in my case here, it is 100 kilohertz because you're measuring, measuring picofarads. So why did I do all this thing and why I'm using battery caps? There are two reasons. The first reason was years ago when my a good friend of mine that is collecting vintage equipment brought me a Japanese receiver communications receiver that as it was from this analog era uh, it was using varicaps for tuning and the problem is that the tuning was completely all over the place so I found out that the voltage of the varicap was okay but the varicap wasn't doing exactly what it shouldn't do what it should do. So I tried to find this varicap. I couldn't find a replacement, a similar replacement, because uh, yeah, I couldn't find one. All the ones that were readily available were have had different characteristics. Problem is, I cannot take another varicap with different edge values because then the, the tuning will not be correct anymore. So I started to check the internet <clears throat> and I found it in, on eBay. Quite a few sellers had it. I chose two of them, one with a, one, a cheaper one, bought 10, and one that was almost the double of the, of the one seller. I took 10 again, just to, to test, to see which one is real, is the real deal or not. Problem is that this was Japanese 1SV something varicaps that are old, obsolete and the, uh, difficult to find. Okay, the first one I received were the, the cheap ones. I put one in the receiver and it got worse. <laughs> it, it just was all over the place, yeah. Uh, I still was waiting for the other ones 
I said, okay, what can I do now? What did I receive? And this is the, was the moment that this circuit was designed just to see what I received. Probably I received just a silicon diode and nothing else because it showed me absolutely garbage when I tested it. Then the new one came, the other ones came, the, the, the more expensive ones. Then I had the circuit, I tested it, and they were absolutely in the specifications of the 1SV something of the manufacturer. I added it to the receiver and the receiver worked great. The second reason why I'm using that is because I designed something like that in 2019. It is a completed digital deep meter, grid deep meter, that can measure the, uh, the resonance frequency, the resonance frequency of a resonance circuit. That means here I have varicaps that I tune, that tune the VCO, this is a VCO, that tune VCO using this, uh, uh, this coil. Uh, I made quite a few of these uh, VCOs for different frequencies and uh, coils that match the VCOs. When you tune the VCO and you come near the frequency set to that, this second tuned circuit will draw energy from this tuned circuit and you will get a dip. The dip will be shown in the dis on the display as from the bar graph to go back. And on the other line of the, of the, uh, of the display, I see the frequency. So this is a grid deep meter that I started quite some years ago, but I got bored and I stopped it. Anyway, uh, as you can see here, this is an absolute easy version, a very light version, but you need, you need the LCR meter that is beeping me because it wants to be turned off. You need an external power supply, etc. Uh, please let me know in the comments if anybody is interested to make the more advanced, to make a more advanced circuit or more advanced appliance that incorporates both this circuit here and a digital picofarad capacitance meter in one. Let me know what you think, if it is useful to put it in my pipeline, to make a, a PCB, to make it an appliance like the other ones you've seen before with a casing, etc. Anyway, this was it for today. I hope you liked this video. I don't know why it's getting yellow, but anyway. Uh, if you like my videos, please hit the like button and subscribe my channel. This will help me, not me in personal, this will help my channel to grow so I can show more of this stuff in future videos because I have really a lot of stuff to show from designs I made, many in RF, analog, power electronics. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and cheers, bye.